Here is FireTech's new audio player, the Music Sync Box, and it will network with the FireTech system, allowing playback of high quality audio that can be perfectly synchronized to your show or special effects event. And this was based off feedback and interest from users. So now this high quality digital audio player joins the suite of existing FireTech audio playback options. The Music Sync Box is similar in construction to the new FTQ module, although it's a little bit smaller. On the top, it has the same power button, same USB-C charging capability, and antenna. You can see it has the same screen and the backwards and forward buttons for navigation. And the exciting part here is on the bottom it has both unbalanced and balanced connectors. Starting off, we have this combo Neutrik jack that will accept quarter inch plugs and it will also accept XLR connectors for the unbalanced output. And then it also has two balanced outputs, both left and right, and I'll connect those here with these XLR connectors. When it's powered on, it goes through a familiar startup screen showing the firmware and the serial number. And then up top, we have the wireless signal strength. It'll report its battery status. It has an ID there for internal drive, and the two X's indicate that there's nothing in the internal drive. And then the audio B with its identification of 99, which is reserved for the audio player. Now it currently indicates that there is no network because we do not have this slaved to any master device. And it's telling us that there's an audio player error because there is no music file. And it indicates that that music file name should be audio. The audio file format is a WAV file, a 44.1 kilohertz sample rate, and a 16-bit depth is recommended for the digital audio file and is the standard fidelity for applications like Finale 3D. The Music Sync Box can play higher fidelity audio files. You'll just need to test those first. To load the audio file, you use a USB-C thumb drive, similar to the FTQ module. It needs to be formatted as FAT32 and should be 32 gigabytes or smaller. And lastly, the file name should always be audio.wave so that it's properly read by the music sync box. With the USB drive inserted, it will detect and read the USB drive. And now we have UD for USB drive with a black box indicating that there's a file. And the screen is asking us to choose whether we want to copy the audio onto the internal drive or play from the USB drive. And for now, we'll select the green forward button to play from the USB drive. The screen is updated now and indicates that with a short press we can play and stop the audio track and with a long press we can control the volume. And the volume can be adjusted from 20 up to a maximum of 100. Now I have the music sync box plugged into this digital audio interface which is connected to the computer here. And this is simply so that there's a visual indication of the audio file playing for this video. Now I can put the audio file in play by pressing the forward green button. And you can see on the computer the waveform in the gain. If this was pre-show, I could use this feature to adjust the gain of the sound system for the show. I can also pause the playback and resume the playback with a short press of the buttons. And with the long press of the forward and backwards buttons, I can adjust the volume of the output for the sync box prior to the show. Now we can network the sync box to a master device. In this case, we'll use this FTM99SX controller. 
and I'll power on the sync box and we'll see here on the screen of the controller that there is one module networked, which is our sync box. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fire up this FTQ module just so we have something else networked and I'll set it to ID one. Now we can see here we've got two devices networked. And if we go into test, it'll do its self-test. And once it's done, show us that all tests are okay. And from here, we can go into the individual module screens. This first screen is for ID1, which is the FTQ module. And if we go into the second device, this is our audio player and it's showing that it is in test. Now if we look at the screen of our networked audio player, we'll see the signal strength from the wireless connection and also that it is in test, but we don't have an audio file loaded. It's showing us ID for internal drive with two X's for no file loaded. So let's take our same USB drive and same audio file and we'll reconnect it and it'll read that drive and ask us how we want to play it. And this time we are going to select the blue backwards button to load it into the internal drive. And once it's done, it's telling us to remove the USB drive and to press any button to continue. And so now we see we have ID with a solid black box showing us that we have a file loaded into the internal drive. Now even with the music sync box network as a slave and in test mode, we can put it into play to do our sound checks before the show to make sure that on our preamps or mixer that we've got the gain set and we've got the volume on the music sync box set correctly. That can all be done in test mode. Also, from the master controller, when the system's in test, we can go to the audio player screen and through the menus, put the audio player into play. And we can pause it. And we can resume it just as if it was the internal player of the controller itself. Lastly, we'll go through putting the networked system into an armed state with the music sync box as a slave. Now that we have the system in armed, if we look at the music sync box screen, it reports that it is armed on the screen, that it's ready to play, and it also indicates that the power button has been disabled. This is to prevent an inadvertent removal of the power. Also, the ability to start and stop the playback from the music sync box has been removed, but you're still able to adjust the volume with a long hold of the buttons. And we can see on the FTQ module that the screen is flashing, and if we look, it's also in an armed state. Okay, we've put the system into play, and the audio has started from the music sync box. And if we look on the screen of the music sync box, we see that it is in play, and there's a play symbol under the ID or the internal drive icon. When it is in play, it's still possible to adjust the volume with long holds of the backwards or forwards button, but the power button is still disabled to prevent inadvertent removal of power. Now we see a number of clocks on the music sync box, and we can put it in pause and look at this. On the lower row, on the left, is the sync box audio file time, and on the right is the time remaining of the audio file. And on the upper row is a synchronized time of the master controller. 
and to the right is the results in milliseconds of a continuous drift monitor. That covered most of the features of the new FireTech Music Sync Box. I hope you check it out, and we look forward to answering any additional questions you might have.